Jim hopes you never go through the ordeal he's been through with his brand new Class C camper. You know, we saved up a long time for this camper and it's been a disaster. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. I'm a full-time RVer. I've been on the road almost five years and you probably know I'm on a mission to bring about much needed change to the RV industry. It used to be that getting that Made in America badge was a big deal and it was something that we could all be proud of as Americans. Well, I think the RV industry is sullying that badge by putting out some really poor quality. That has got to change. Today I interview Jim who shares his story in order to help you avoid the mess that he's been through. Me and my wife have been camping since probably 1990. We've had two pop-ups, six travel trailers, a fifth wheel, a Class A, and then this Class C, which is a 2023 Thor Four Winds 31W. And here is a picture of it, because <laughs> it's in the shop right now again. When I got ready to retire from the Navy the second time, we bought a brand new 2022 Forest River FR3 Class A. It was a terrible motorhome. It was bad. It was loud. And we, we traded it in to the same dealership for this Class C. Our dealership we always go through, because it's the closest one, is Giant Recreational World out of Ormond Beach, Florida. So we worked out a deal. We bought it. That was in December. From January until March, we had it in storage. We wanted to go somewhere close for the first time. We brought it home. I wanted to, you know, hook the power up, hook water up, check everything out. All your tanks and your valves and filter is underneath your bed. So you got to lift the mattress up. You got to access there. The bad thing, all your electric components are there. So if you get a leak, all your electrical components get wet. There was a leak coming off the water filter. So I called up Giant Rec World. They said, go ahead and bring it in. They called me up and leaks fixed on the water filter. Good to go. The service rep says, hey, there may be a little bit of water on the floor. He said that when he was working on it, some water may have leaked out from underneath. I said, okay. I get the camper. I get in. Water is pouring out from underneath. So I take my sweatshirt off. I clean up the floor. I come home. We're about 20 miles away from there. I take, raise up the bed. It's flooded inside there. No cleanup, no nothing. And all your electrical components are sopping wet. So I can't put power on it, nothing. So what I do is I get my wet and dry vac. I clean it out. I took a fan, put it in there, and dried it all out. Put power on it, put the slide out, checked everything out, and make sure they did a good job on fixing the leak. No leaks, we're good to go. I go right by the service advisor. I go right to the service manager. I said, you got a minute. And one thing I know, if you kill people with kindness, you get a whole lot farther than if you're mm -hmm. nasty to people. So I started off really nice right off the bat. Had my receipt. I said, look, this is what happened. Told him about the water leak. He didn't clean his mess up. He's going to refund me my money. I said, look, I don't want my money refunded. You keep the money. I don't want the money. All I'm saying here is there's a problem. We need to correct it before we have a lot of issues. He said, nope, I'm going to give you your money back. So he gave me back. It was $255. Chris is the service manager. Great. Our next trip is to Panama City in May. From here to Panama City is about seven and a half, eight hours. Well, we hit a lot of rain on the way over there. After we get there, my wife noticed a little bit of water on the floor. After I got the camper all set up, underneath the furnace, you've got an access. You know, it's a storage compartment. It was full of water. It was flooded. So I called the dealership and they said, well, when you come back into town, bring it in. We'll check it out. This whole 15, 20 days we were gone, I'm looking at everything, trying to figure something out. Because the more I can do for them, the better it is. We get back. We give them the camper. They said that they'd taken and they looked at it. They really couldn't find nothing, but they sealed the door to the furnace. I'm like, okay, we'll try it. Our next trip is July 1st. Once again, we run into a bunch of rain. We pulled into a gas station in Miami and the water is just pouring out from underneath. The whole slide out is just dripping down. I open that compartment once again, full of water. A little bit of water inside. It seemed to leak more going down the road than just setting. So we got it back and they said they'd sealed the windows. September 1st, we were gonna to go to Disney Fort Wilderness. We, we had to go get the camper from storage, 
brought it home, watering it. I took it in and they're like, well, we're going to try getting it back to you in time. And I said, look, don't, don't do that. Take your time. I'd rather cancel my Disney trip so you will have enough time to fix it. And because I don't want to rush job, I want it done right. They hooked this machine up called it's a leak test. And what it is, is it's like a, a huge fan that sucks air from the outside and pressurizes the inside of your camper. And they go around and they spray soapy water everywhere. And wherever it bubbles, you got a leak. Well, there was leaks everywhere. All this wood in front right here had to be replaced. It was all rotting and full of mold. Now this camper was built August of 2022. It sat in the showroom floor from August until December when we bought it. It rotted out from December until now. So they had to replace that. They had to reseal this whole slide out. So that trip had to be canceled. So they got everything done. It took them 30 days to fix this. Supposedly, it was fixed. Our next trip is to Helen, Georgia. Get the camper, bring it home, water in it again. So they've got it again. They put the leak tech on it again. They said they found some more leaks. Thursday morning, I get an email, water inside the camper again. Because we had three or four days of heavy rain. All right, he's going to work on it. So yesterday, I stopped by the camper place. I get a hold of the tech. And he's like, each time we, we work on it, we're getting less water inside. My thing is, every time you get water inside, something's getting wet. That wood's getting wet. We've already had wood rot and mold in it. I don't want no more. They said that this window, one of the problems, it wasn't installed correctly. And they found some issues with that. So they took the window out yesterday. They had to trim up where the window goes because the hole was... It was not big enough. That's why the, the window wouldn't fit. Six of the screws that were holding the window in, they had no bite. They were just sitting there. They had to order a new window seal. They're going to put the seal in. They're going to put the leak tech machine back inside, check it for leaks, and go from there. Now, we're due to go to Galveston, Texas for a week at the end of October for the Lone Star Bike Rally, which I planned it for a year. We don't know if we're going to make that. If they find more leaks... Next week, we're, you know, we're probably not going to make that trip. We've actually thought about getting rid of this camper and trading it in and buying something else. We lost $17,000 when we traded the Class A in for the Class C. As it is right now, I'd probably lose about $30,000 trading it in. I just, I can't afford to lose that much. I don't know if we're not going to get into the same problem we're into now. We may get another problem. I don't think I need quality control. I really don't. I mean, it's just terrible. Thor, I wrote Thor a letter, told him everything I had. I wrote him twice, and nobody's ever got back with me. They don't care. Two weeks ago, I got a survey from Thor, and I didn't give him good marks. I get a phone call from their customer service, and they're like, we got your survey back, and, you know, you didn't give us very good marks. I said, no. I started talking about it. She didn't even want to hear it. She just says, well, you know, if you have a problem, you can contact our warranty department. I said, ma'am, I've contacted your warranty department twice, and nobody's called me or emailed me. She goes, well, I'll send them an email and have them call you. That was probably a week, week and a half ago. Nobody still has contacted me. To me, is they just want you to get through that first year of warranty, and then it's on you. My camper has been in and out of the shop since June, eating up my warranty. Almost five months it's been in the shop. I only got a year warranty, so I got two months left of the warranty, and I'm done. We love this camper because... For a Class C, it's got, it's top of the line everything. It's got everything we wanted, but if they don't fix the leaks, it's just going to rot out from underneath. The whole slide out's leaking. The whole left side of this camper has had a problem. Hopefully somebody else doesn't get into the same predicament. If you can, get it inspected before you buy. The only problem is, is it, and I don't even know if it would help, if you did get your camper inspected, they, they can't find the leaks. Because they're not going to, you know, put a leak test on it and look. But had the ability to get somebody to look at it, at least you would be a little bit better, I think. To me, it'd probably be worth it. I never thought about it until after I started having all these issues. Florida has a lemon law. After three of the same things, you can get a new vehicle. Well, they do cover RVs, but only motor transmission. They don't cover living conditions. 
Look at reviews. We were looking at buying that Thor Tiburon. I joined a Facebook group. After all I've seen on it, I'm glad I didn't get to Tiburon. It's it's bad. I don't know how many people had to get their floors replaced because Thor wasn't installing the floor correctly. Now, I can understand. If Thor does one camper and the floor is bad on it, okay, then you change your process. Okay? Hey, this we're not putting the floor down correctly. We need to do this. But I mean, it's just camper after camper after camper needing a floor replace. It would be very helpful if you're handy, but if you're not handy, you want to make sure you can find somebody that is handy, can help you through the process of buying a camper, setting your flat tow vehicle up, and if not, just YouTube everything, because a lot of stuff that I don't know, I'll YouTube. Don't buy something before research. Dealerships, car, motorcycle, campers, boats, they always try. If you buy it right today, you know, we're going to save you, you know, thousands of dollars. Don't let them do that. I always, when I go to buy something, I look at it. I'll look at it for three or four days and I'll keep going back and I'll keep thinking about it. Don't impulse buy. That's the thing. Don't impulse buy. We were camping up in Myrtle Beach and there was an older couple pulled in about two campsites down from me. They were old, They were elderly. I know I'm old. They were old. They had no idea what they bought. They went to Myrtle Beach on vacation, flew there, went looking at a camper, and they sold them a Class C motorhome. They didn't know how to hook up the power, the water, the slides, nothing. I went back to my camper. I told my wife I saw I'll be back in a couple hours. And I went down there and helped them set up. And then I told them they were only going to be there one day. They were, they, they were from uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and they were going to go back the next day. And I said, when you get ready to break down the next day, let me know, and I'll come down there and I'll help you put everything away. I cannot believe that that dealership sold them people that camper. Them guys, they, they definitely did not have a conscience. If they can't fix this leak, I've already contacted Blue Compass in St. Augustine, which they're a Thor dealer. They said that they would take my camper there even though I didn't buy it from them. And they said, well, Jim, we'll fix your camper. The only problem is, is that Rec World has put a warranty claim in for this. Thor will pay off. Thor is not going to pay off again for this. They're like, it's going to be my buck. But like I told my wife, I said, if it cost me three or $4,000 to fix it and it's fixed, that's better than losing 30000 trading it in. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and definitely share. We need to get this video out in front of the powers that be in the RV industry. So if you know somebody in the RV industry, please make sure they see this video. And if you have some tips for newbies, for people that are buying a camper for the first time, please put that in the comments. As always, these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing.